Hi, I'm Dr. Joe and I am to lovethatface.com and thank you for watching our channel. We have over 17 million views and I just am so grateful. Uh, if you watch our channel, you know that my signature procedure is facelift and I love doing face and neck lifts and we do almost 100 a year and I've done over uh, 1,100 of them and I have quite a lot of videos that discuss just about everything in facelift surgery from diagnosis to treatment to complications and revisions. And today we're going to talk about the top 10 uh, complaints after facelift surgery. Now there really may be a little bit more than 10. So let's put this into perspective. When you do a surgery uh, like a facelift, which is, uh, you know, people say, is this a big surgery? Well, it's certainly not like a, a heart transplant, but it's a two and a half hour surgery if you're just doing a, a facelift and it addresses the face from here to here and doesn't do anything in here. So sometimes we're doing brow lift or eyelids or cheek implants, chin implants, laser. And so the more procedures you do, obviously the uh, more comprehensive your recovery is going to be. So uh, somebody that comes in and just uh, is a younger person with a small lift, they're going to have an easier recovery than an older person with a lot of skin uh, and many other procedures. Now, when we have cosmetic surgery, okay, it's elective surgery, so nobody has to have cosmetic surgery. And it's um, pretty classic that all of us, you know, we look at our face when we comb our hair. I mean, I don't have any, but uh, when we brush our teeth, when women put on makeup, but we don't pay that much attention to it. But once you do surgery on somebody, they look at their face every five minutes, okay? So you have to really talk to your surgeon uh, about what to expect uh, from your facelift and get this all understood beforehand. Because once you operate on somebody, they're always looking in the mirror. And three days later, they're, they're worried about their incision or one side being bigger than the other. So you, you have to have adequate time to heal. And these are the things you want to discuss. So I'm making this video uh, for several reasons. Number one, to educate people that may have facelifts and especially for my own patients so they can watch this beforehand and understand some of the common situations. So I think in my practice, the first and most common complaint that I get after facelift surgery, and this starts uh, really the next morning, is, hey, Dr. Joe, my neck is tight, okay? Well, that's good, all right? We put a lot of stitches in the neck in different places, in the platysmoplasty, in the smasectomy, uh, a lot of deep sutures, and they're very tight for several reasons. Number one, these sutures are gonna dissolve and go away, and you have to over-tighten them a little bit because um, as the patient heals, this stuff relaxes. So by doing the deep sutures and then tightening the skin, people are going to feel very tight at first. All right. For the average person, this is acceptable, but they mention it. Sometimes it might even be a little hard to swallow, especially if they were intubated for general anesthesia. So tight neck, that's number one. And my advice to them is, listen, it's, it's tight. You paid me to make it tight. You're going to be happy that it's tight. And this feeling of tightness will go away in several days. Okay, another really common uh, complaint or remark is that I'm very full under my chin. It's very tight and it's very hard and it's hard to turn my neck. Well, again, when you're doing facelift surgery, you're, you're really, especially on a comprehensive lift or a bigger facelift, you're involving a lot of the muscles and you get swelling and, and soreness. So yes, it's very hard for people to turn their neck at first. And, and again, these problems uh, may last for a couple days. I mean, in rare cases, they may last for a couple weeks, but this is one of the reasons why people don't drive for uh, that first week or so is because it is hard to turn their neck. The submental firmness, when we tighten everything in this area and gravity causes the swelling to move down, it's not uncommon to be very uh, tight here, kind of swollen here, and instead of being nice and um, flat, it's actually uh, a little bit concave. And that is just because of the way the fluid, the edema, and the swelling uh, occurs. And, and that resolves. And, and again, people worry about this too early. On day two, you can't worry about fullness or tightness of the neck. All right, the next topic are lumps and bumps. So when you do a facelift surg uh, surgical procedure, you're dealing with the deep tissues, the, the fat, 
the smaths, the muscles, and you're putting in sutures. Sometimes there's a little bleeding where you go and cauterize that and that'll make a little uh, firm area under the skin. And once you put all these stitches in and do all this procedure, and then you take the skin and you redrape it, it's it's like sometimes when you, when you make your bed, there may be a wrinkle in it and then you pull the sheet and the wrinkle comes out. Uh, the bottom line is this, there are, it's not uncommon to have these contour irregularities at first. And the skin is pulled tight over the muscles, you have bleeding in there, you have swelling. And so people see and or feel lumps or bumps. Um, this is not uncommon on the side of the cheeks. It, it can be in the neck and especially behind the ears. A lot of people will comment on there. Again, you've got to relax because all this stuff works itself out. Now, many of these things will disappear in the first two weeks because that's really what I tell patients. It's about two weeks for a facelift recovery. And that's not two weeks before your class reunion, right? I mean, you wanna, if you had some really big important event, you'd wanna give yourself a month or six weeks. Now, in some cases, a patient may have a lump or a bump somewhere from their surgery, and it may take a number of weeks to resolve. Um, sometimes we will inject that with a weak steroid, but again, the lumps and bumps are just part of the facelift procedure. All right, now we're gonna talk about uh, another common complaint, and that is discomfort and or insomnia. All right, when you have surgery and anesthesia and you're taking multiple medications, it throws our body off. Everybody knows that. Now, a facelift shouldn't be a, a really painful procedure. Matter of fact, we have some patients that never take a pain pill. And the variability of patients is pretty amazing. So I see all my patients the next morning after surgery. When I walk in the room, some people are walking around, they're eating a pack of nabs and drinking some orange juice and, and you know, they're uh, jollible and, and have fun pajamas on. And sometimes I walk in the room and the lights are off and the patient has their eyes covered and they're just so, so sore. And they, um, and so, you know, some people are just, they, they do better with surgery and other people are a little bit more sensitive. You shouldn't have severe pain. And if you do, that's generally the cause, uh, a possible complication that your surgeon needs to look into. You're gonna have some discomfort, some tightness, as we talked about, that is uh, for sure. And we give all of our patient pain medicine, and most people take it for the first couple days, but honestly, it's pretty rare that we will refill a pain prescription because actually you're usually numb, which leads into the next complaint. So when you separate the skin from the underlying tissues, you're also separating the little nerves that innervate the skin. And it takes a while for these little nerves to grow back and hook up. Now I'm not talking about major nerves that move muscles or give feeling to broad areas. I'm talking about just the little sensory nerves that give us our, what I'll call everyday feeling. So people are going to be numb. And they're gonna, you know, they're, my, my cheeks or my ears feel like rubber, my chin feels like rubber, and that is 100% natural, and that will resolve. Now, there are times when people can have extended numbness, and uh, that's pretty rare, but some people can have areas that are numb for weeks or even sometimes months, um, but again, that's not the norm. And in terms of your motor nerves, nerves that move the facial muscles, uh, a severe motor nerve injury is really rare. Now, sometimes people may have a little weakness around their mouth or their smile. And again, uh, I've not seen that be permanent. So um, numbness for sure. And you have to expect that. And you just have to understand that that's gonna get better. Okay, now the next complaint has to do with the ears, okay? It's not uncommon for patients to look in the mirror after a facelift and they say, my ears are uneven or my ears are different. Okay, so here's the situation. We're making these incisions all around the ear and you have swelling, all right? Now, some people, their earlobes swell twice the size. It's gonna go down. Your earlobes aren't gonna be that size. And I don't think the ears really change in position or protrude, but the swelling around the ears can affect their position a little bit. And this is why it's so important that we take preoperative pictures before the surgery. So I just tell people, look, wherever your ears were when we started, they're gonna be there when we finish. And if you have really swollen lobes, they're gonna go down. And some people are just really sensitive to earlobe swelling. Now, we're very, very careful about placing the earlobes in a natural position so we don't have a, a pixie earlobe situation. 
But again, 99.99% of the time when a patient has a question about their ears, uh, they, uh, this, it's the same answer. Relax, I'll hold your hand, I promise this is going to go down and it's going to look good. One more thing while we're talking about ears, and that is detached earlobes. So as I mentioned, we take great pains to make a very natural uh, incision, of course, in earlobe position. That's so important in facelift surgery. But sometimes patients roll over in bed, they wear pullover clothes, uh, and they separate their earlobe, and they get quite concerned about this. And um, uh, you know, when I used to do this surgery and somebody separated an earlobe, I would go back and, and sew it back up, but really 99% of these will heal by themselves. So it's important to let your doctor know about that, <clears throat> but it's very important not to overworry because mostly it will just reattach. The next topic is bruising. Now, this is something I see all across the board. So I have some patients that say, hey, Dr. Joe, I bruise just all the time. I know I'm gonna turn purple. And they have very, very little bruising. And I have other people that say they never bruise and, and they turn purple. So, you know, bruising again is variable. And a facelift is, an, uh, is a procedure that goes in a lot of different places and it's not unusual to get bruising. Now, uh, bruising and swelling will follow gravity. So if you're up and walking around, your bruising will can move from your face to your neck and, and really down to your chest. So it's not unusual if you see bruising here or some swelling uh, or boggy skin in this area and the bruising will go away. Now, on some patients, they have extended bruising or they have maybe a little area that can last longer. Some patients like to use Arnica or preparations like that. Uh, I'm not sure there's any scientific basis, but for sure, 100%, we are on top of every patient that they don't take anything that will affect their bleeding. And that includes a list of so many things we have probably several hundred things on the list, and but especially aspirin, fish oil, garlic, ginkgo, ginseng, um, you know, any uh, oil-based uh, mega vitamin doses, um, anything that's going to affect your bleeding can affect your bruising and also your recovery. You know, unfortunately, and men are the worst at this. They'll say, well, I'm having a facelift, so I'm going to be off for two weeks. What a great time to uh, sheetrock my garage, you know? No, you've got to rest. You have to be selfish. And when a doctor does uh, a procedure like a facelift, there, there's three variables. You have the doctor, and hopefully you've chosen a, the right surgeon and a good surgeon, and most surgeons are, are good at what they do and sincere about it. You have the patient, okay? The patient has to follow directions. They have to take care of their incisions and their healing and rest and have proper surgical nutrition. And if they don't do that, they can cause a bad result. You could have a perfect surgeon, a perfect patient, then you have this other variable called mother nature. And the doctor or the patient has no control of mother nature. And sometimes we get some curveballs with bleeding or swelling or infection. And luckily, Severe complications with facelift surgeries are extremely rare, and knock on wood, I have never had a catastrophic uh, um, problem with my surgery or anesthesia, uh, and uh, patient safety and natural outcomes are the two things that we really need to pay attention to. Depending on the type of facelift and how much the patient uh, bleeds during surgery, and, and some people with totally normal coagulation systems, they just bleed more. Some people have higher blood pressure. And if somebody uh, is you know, uh, bleeding or I think they're gonna have a, a lot of fluid buildup, I will use a drain during the facelift surgery. And they'll have this drain from anywhere from one day to several days. And it's a, it goes down and across the neck. And um, you know, it's kind of creepy to patients, but when you need it, it can be very important. And many of my surgical patients don't need any drain. When you have the drain and you pull the drain out, that doesn't hurt, so people are afraid of that. However, when you have the drain and you take it out, it can leave a little tunnel, just a, a, a little elevated area where the drain was. And that may take a, a week or so to resolve. So when patients see that after the drain, that's something else that we uh, tell them about. Now, the other thing is, Incision hygiene. 
Competent surgeons spend so much time, my surgical team, we spend so much time on the incisions. And after doing, uh, you know, well over a thousand facelifts and, and doing this stuff for decades, um, you, get, you get really good at it. And I can have a perfect incision, but if the patient doesn't take care of it, then it's not going to be perfect. So fortunately, there's not that much that the patient needs to do. I use only dissolvable stitches, all right? I'm, every once in a while, I may use staples, but not, not very often. So many of my patients come from out of state uh, that I use dissolvable stitches so they don't have to go find a doctor to get their stitches out or their staples out. And really, it's pretty simple. The patient just has to, when they're in the shower, just gently wash these areas with their fingers with a um, mild soap or baby shampoo. and they can wipe them off with peroxide once or twice a day and keep a little coat of neosporin on them. Um, recently, we have started using a uh, scar preparation called Stratoderm, Stratamed, Stratacell. There's actually three preparations and the, the uh, Stratamed is for new incisions. And so we have patients put that on their incisions and that's been a, uh, a nice thing. I think that some of these scar preparations do help, but the patient has to clean their incisions. And really, it's the caregiver that has to clean the incisions because it's, it's harder for the patient. They can do it in the shower, uh, but you, you've got to have a good caregiver. You have to have somebody to help you look, see, and get to the areas that you can't see. So incision hygiene, very important. Okay, and the last bit of advice here is dot, dot, dot. I went on the internet and it said XXX, okay? So who doesn't go on the internet? We all do, right? But <laughs> it's, you know, there's great information out there, but just because it's on the internet, as you know, doesn't mean that it is true information. And I have a patient that may have a little lump or a bump and they go out and they get into some thing about submandibular glands or hematomas or, and they get all worked up and, and afraid and everything and they come in and it's nothing, it's a little bump. So, you know, Trust your doctor. Listen to your doctor. If you chose the right surgeon, you're going to hear all this stuff before your facelift. But you, you just don't try to be your own doctor because it's very frustrating for uh, the doctors and the nurses when people come in and they're, they're afraid for no reason. And some people are, are so afraid, it's almost like they want something bad to happen. They, you know, is this this thing? Is this this thing? Is my ear going to fall off? You know, so. Um, let your doctor be the doctor, and if they have a good surgical team, you're gonna know you're in the right place. So I hope this has been helpful, and again, I hope my patients watch this, and this will answer a lot of their questions. Uh, again, I'm Dr. Joe Niamh to lovethatface.com. Facelift is our favorite procedure. We do a lot of patients from out of town and out of the country, and it would be our honor to be your surgeon. I'm Dr. Joe Niamh to lovethatface.com.